Now we are going to talk about type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Already we have talked that type 2 hypersensitivity reaction is antibody mediated, right? The antibodies which are made against the antigens which are expressed on the cell surface or antigens which are expressed on the extracellular matrix, right? And these antigens are intrinsic to the tissue to which reaction is occurring. So we can say in type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, as we mentioned previously, antigens are fixed and intrinsic to the tissue to which the reaction is occurring. These antigens may be original antigens or these antigens in the tissue may be modified antigens, right? For example, look here. If there is an RBC here, right, and these are RBC's own antigens, and if immune system make antibodies and these antibodies are against the RBC's antigens, it is a classical type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. But it is also possible that this is RBC antigen and there is some chemical group from a drug which modifies the antigen, right? For example, RBC antigen was this one, the green. Now what has happened? That green antigen of RBC is modified by a blue molecule. Now this molecule which is modifying the self antigen, this may be a drug derivative or it may be from some microbe derivative. But immune system now reacts, immune system is now making antibodies which are directed against some modified auto molecules, self molecules. So this will be again an example of type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Again let me repeat it. In type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, there are antibody directed against the antigens which are expressed on the cell surface or on the surface of some extracellular layer like glomerular basement membrane or alveolar basement membrane. These antigens may be original or these may be modified by some drugs or modified by some other event like uh, some microbial antigen bind with the self antigens and modify it. Is that clear? Now, actually, Type 2 hypersensitivity reaction can be further subdivided into three types. Type 2 hypersensitivity reaction can be further subdivided into three ways that how damage occur to the tissue, right? For example, in A category, we put those type 1 hypersensitivity reaction in which there is target cell target cell depletion depletion or destruction destruction without inflammation without inflammation i will explain how it happened right there is target cell depletion or destruction this target cell depletion or destruction but important point is without inflammation in the tissue now you must be thinking how it's possible let me tell you let's suppose there's an rbc here is that right there's an R red blood cell here and okay there's an rbc here and there is rbc's antigens and here is an antibody. Antibodies usually in type 2 hypersensitivity reactions are IgG or IgM. Let's suppose it is IgG antibody. You know this is when antibody bind with the antigens on the RBC, antibody's FC portion is activated. Is yeah, here is a special cell. Now, what is this cell? This cell has a receptor. This cell has a receptor for IgG which is binding with the target cell. This cell is coated by IgG and IgG FC portion has a receptor on the cell and when this IgG stimulates this receptor, this receptor gave intracellular signal for phagocytosis and now RBC will be phago cytosed and it will simply disappear. This type of classical example is seen in warm type 
autoimmune hemolytic anemia right this type of special example is autoimmune hemolytic anemia warm type warm type mean that in autoimmune hemolytic anemia warm type there are autoantibodies directed against rbc which belong the blood blood group uh, antibodies belong to the igg group is that right why we call them warm type because these antibodies can destroy the rbcs at body temperature 37 centigrade because the other antibodies will discuss later which help the rbc destruction at low temperature so they are called cold type so here we are dealing with the warm type uh, you can say autoimmune hemolytic anemia what really happens that person develop autoantibodies of igg group against the rbcs and these rbcs which are coated by the igg when they pass through spleen when they pass through spleen splenic this cell is splenic macrophage what is this splenic macrophage here this is an example of splenic macrophage so splenic macrophage engulf or phagocytose igg coated rbcs is that right and of course in these patients there's splenomegaly as well there's hemolysis hemolytic anemia and there's splenomegaly is that clear so this is one example where cells are depleted is that right and processes phagocytosis and in this phagocytosis because the phagocytosis of this rbc has been facilitated by the igg so this IgG is working as opsonin. IgG is working as opsonin. Let me tell you what is opsonization and what is opsonin. Opsonin is any molecule, which chemical molecule which bind to a cell or particulate matter and facilitate its phagocytosis. Again, let me tell you. What is opsonization? Opsonization is a process in which opsonins bind with a particulate matter which may be a bacteria or which may be a cell and there is facilitated phagocytosis right now here opsonizing molecule is igg because igg on one side holds the cell to be phagocytosed and other side igg is stimulating phagocyte is that right so opsonin another example of opsonin is that let's suppose here is another rbc red blood cell and here is antibody this antibody activate complement system c1 4 2 c3 b a will be going away c3 b c5 6 7 8 9 but if this whole process goes then there will be lysis but let's suppose this process is partly activated now look here antibody bind with the antigen I will make it a larger so that you understand it better. That this is an RBC and there are antigens. Here is an antibody. It activates C1, 4, 2, C3, B because A component will be removed. A component of 4 will be removed, A component of 2 will be removed, and A component of 3 will be removed. So this C3, B, this is also opsonizing agent. Because this C3B may fall over here and stick to this point, C3B. Now this C3B, when it is binding here, it is also opsonizing molecule because on one side it is binding with that cell to be phagocytose. Other side, C3B has receptor on the phagocytes. So again, what will happen or let's suppose there is one C3B over here. Now what happens? These are opsonins binding with that target cell and again who will come here can you tell me who is coming to eat yeah this is the receptor for c3b receptor right and again who is coming here for phagocytosis Mac phagocytic cell may be macrophage so what is happening look at first example and the second example In the first example the molecule which enhances the phagocytosis is IgG. In second, second example, molecule which enhances the phagocytosis is C3B, right? Here, IgG is opsonin, there C3B is opsonin. And macrophage have receptor for the IgG as well as macrophage have receptor with 
C3B. Important point which you have to understand, here antibody is directly leading to phagocytosis, here antibody led to the production of opsonizing molecule and these opsonizing molecules coat the cell and then this facilitated phagocytosis. Is there any question up to this? So naturally any cells, it may be RBCs or it may be neutrophils or it may be platelet, any cell which develop antibodies directed against its antigens then facilitated phagocytosis right will eventually reduce that cell in the body and we say there will be depletion of that cell but do you think there will be any inflammation there no there will be depletion of that cell another example of similar situation is that let's suppose there's an rbc here right and this is the antigen and here is antibody here for fc portion of the antibody is activated it binds with c1 4 2 here is c3b a component will go away and this will bind with c5b because a component will be going away c5b with c6 7 8 and 9 all this complex c5b 6 7 8 9 this is called this complex is called membrane attack complex so actually what really happens it is like this c5 b c6 7 8 9 so all these right they become together and make a donut shaped channel and this channel may be inserted within the target cell membrane and cell will die with osmotic shock because its cell membranes permeably you can say it is analogous of drilling the holes within the target cell so what is really happening there what is really happening there that here antibodies activate the complement and complement produce membrane attack complex membrane attack complex fall on the target cell and skill the cell with and destroy the cell with osmotic shock is that right now look here so again do you think there's significant inflammation there no cell has been killed without inflammation so we can say in the, this these are the examples in which target cell depletion or destruction is done target cell depletion or destruction is done with the help of antibody without inflammation is that right this is one mechanism how type 2 hypersensitivity reactions work the example of this type of mechanisms are uh, many diseases for example as i told you example may be autoimmune hemolytic anemias or autoimmune thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia in which case autoantibodies are formed against the platelet proteins right or autoimmune neutropenia neutropenia or there can be abo incompatibility for example my blood group is a and your blood group is b if my blood is wrongly transfused into your body now my rbcs the donor rbcs when they go into wrong recipient the recipients antibody will bind with the donors rbcs and destroy them or in erythroblastosis fetalis erythroblast Dosis fetalis. In case of erythroblastosis fetalis, Rh negative mother make anti-Rh antibodies which pass through the pass through the placenta to the Rh positive baby. Again, let me tell you. If there's a lady who is Rh negative and she is holding a product of conception which is Rh positive, then she make she may make anti-Rh antibodies. And anti RH antibodies are belonging to IgG class and they can cross the placenta. And anti RH antibodies from the mother may go to the product of conception of fetus and there they will bind with the fetal RBCs and destroy them. The condition called erythroblastosis fetalis. Is that right? So these are all examples of type 2 hypersensitivity reaction in which there is cell destruction or depletion without involving significant without involving significant 
inflammation right is it clear then if if it is clear a category is clear then i will go to the b category the point in a category is that cell the region depleted or destroyed for example destruction by membrane attack complex or depleted by facilitated phagocytosis either antibodies directly phagos induce phagocytosis or antibodies by partially activating the complement produce c3b and c3b act as opsonin right so in the first in these two cases there will be facilitated phagocytosis and cells will be depleted or third case where antibody activate the complement and complement produce membrane attack complex to destroy the cells am i clear and which destroy the cells any question you have here now the other point which is important that if this is clear we'll go to the second example next example we'll talk about that again antibodies are directed against some fixed antigens but there's inflammatory reaction in the tissue what is there now we are going to the second example okay before we really complete there's one more example of the a category no 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 then there's another example uh, let's suppose that this is your target cell and here is the antibody now it's very important to understand somewhat sometimes it happen antibody fc portion is activated and a killer cell come here this is the receptor of the killer cell and this is the killer cell and this cell very angry cell this cell by simply contact killing kill the target cell this is called antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity because this cell will die right so you can rather we should make it like this this is naughty and happy and this is very sad because it is going to die so this is an antibody is involving the system so it is called antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity adcc have you heard of it adcc adcc is a condition in which ADCC as a condition antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity, cell mediated cytotoxicity, right? And again, the cell will be destroyed. The cell will be destroyed. And will there be any inflammation? No. But the point which you have to remember here is please, there's no phagocytosis involved. There's no phagocytosis involved. This is simple contact killing, right? And the cells of there are so many cells which can work like contact killer. There are many cells which can work like contact killer. You will be surprised. Sometimes neutrophil also work as contact killer. Usually neutrophil the phagocytic cell. But sometimes neutrophil act as contact killer. Sometimes macrophages work as contact killer. Sometimes sinophil work as contact killer. Especially when there is IgE involved. Right? and some lymphocytes like molecules called natural killer cell can also work as contact killer so it is called antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity again don't confuse it with cell mediated type 4 hypersensitivity reaction because in type 4 hypersensitivity reaction there is no antibody involved but here antibody is involved here antibody is involved is that right okay let's recap how much type 2 hypersensitivity reaction we have done? We have already done, discussed the type 2 hypersensitivity reaction is a type of immunological reaction, tissue damaging immune response of the antibody mediated response against the fixed intrinsic antigen. Is that right? Then we said there are three ways. This is without inflammation. Second method is in which there is complement and FC receptor mediated inflammation. Second example is when there is complement complement or fc receptor mediated inflammation hallmark is inflammation right and third is antibody mediated cell dysfunction antibody mediated cell this 
function. Now, first of all, this is category A, here is category B and here is category C. All of them are type 2 hypersensitivity. In first case, cells are depleted or destroyed but no inflammation. In second case, there is inflammation. In third case, there is no cell depleted, no cell destroyed, no inflammation but cellular dysfunction occur. The point which you have, how do you differentiate these three mechanisms of type 2? It is still all of them are examples of type 2. I will go into detail. But first you say category A is cells are depleted or destroyed without inflammation. B is there is inflammation. C is cells are not depleted, not destroyed and no inflammation but cell dysfunction is there. I will give you example. It will become more clear to you. Already we have discussed this. So let's make it a prototype. One example here was that this was an RBC, this was an RBC and there was simple antibody and what was here? Is that right? This was antibody directly doing phagocytosis. Second example was that RBC was there and there was antibody has led to the formation of what is this opsonin and molecule right C3B and now it is coming to bind it bite it here with again phagocytosis now in these two examples we see this antibody mediated phagocytosis or antibody mediated production of obstinins and then phagocytosis both things involve the phagocytosis and eventually depletion of the cell. Second mechanism I told you was that phagocytosis was not involved and what was there? Antibody activate? Yes. Antibody activates? Complement C1 and this complement make membrane attack complex and that complex lead to lysis of the target cell. Third mechanism which we discussed, this is different, these two are different from each other. In first case is cells are phagocytosed. In second example, cells are simply destroyed. And in third example, cells are destroyed but in a very unique fashion. What is that fashion? Right, contact killing. That antibody help the contact killer to be activated. Antibody help the contact killer to be activated and this cell is really very very sad this is called ad adcc situation antibody dependent cell mediate but all of them are what type 2 hypersensitivity reaction because in all the example target cell is having the antigens against which antibodies are formed and all of them have cellular phagocytization or destruction and all of them are characterized by depletion and destruction of the cells target cell without inflammation is that right now we come to this situation what really happens here an example of these cases we have already learned what were the example autoimmune hemolytic anemia there was autoimmune thrombocytopenia autoimmune neutropenia and there was ABO incompatibility there was erythroblastosis fetalis these were some classical example of this type of hypersensitive type 2 hypersensitivity reaction now we can come to some other type of hypersensitivity reaction in which inflammation is involved let's suppose this is glomerular basement membrane the target is glomerular basement membrane and these are glomerular you can say collagen and in the glomerular collagen there is one glomerular basement membrane as type 4 collagen what is the collagen present over there type 4 collagen one of the type 4 collagen it is type 4 collagen and there is one component this circular component is non collagenous component of type 4 collagen it is non collagenous because it is not part of the twisting figure sometimes antibodies are directed against it sometimes antibodies are directed against this component 
Now let's suppose this is an intrinsic antigen of the collagen. This is intrinsic antigen of the collagen. Now if antibody is directed against it, antibody can activate number one complement. You understand C1, 4, 2, 3, C, 5B, 6, 7, 8 and 9. And this membrane attack complex may puncture your glomerular basement membrane. But meanwhile, look, C3A, the release products are C3A or C5 a or C4 A. All these A components may act as chemotactic agents and mast cell stimulator. All these cells may act as chemotactic agent and mast cell stimulator. So that will build the immune inflammatory response. Are you understanding? Now inflammatory cells will come here. What will happen? Inflammatory cell will come here. For example, C5A is strongly chemotactic for neutrophils. The neutrophils will come here, they will release their enzymes, destructive enzymes, and they will release their oxygen derived free radicals. And all these substances and enzymes will further do the damage and induce inflammation. They will do further damage and do the inflammation. So what we have seen that here antibodies involved. Antibody activated the complement. Some of the complement fragment act as chemical mediators of inflammation. And plus some cells are coming there and these cells are also releasing, you can say enzymes and oxygen derived free radicals and other cytokines and enhancing the inflammatory reaction. So this is an example in which inflammation is there. Now clinical example of this is classically some of the glomerulonephritis, especially Goods Pasture Syndrome. Have you heard of it? Good Pasture Syndrome. And Goods Pasture Syndrome, autoantibodies are directed against non-collagenous component of type 4 collagen present in glomerular basement membrane and present in alveolar basement membrane. Is that right? Against the glomerular basement membrane and alveolar basement membrane. And the, there, there is glomerular inflammation. Why? Because uh, Antibodies react with glomerular basement membrane and activate complement and produce chemical substances C5A, C3A, uh, which activate the mast cell and especially C5A attract the neutrophil. Neutrophil come and release their pro-inflammatory product and further injury, right? And when this is uh, damage to the glomeruli, there is hematuria and proteinuria. And if same reaction occur with the alveolar basement membrane, patient will develop hemoptysis. Patient will develop hemoptysis, right? Another example of this type of situation is a very classical example. All of you must be knowing. Have you heard of acute rheumatic fever? Rheumatic fever? That is a high type 2 hypersensitivity reaction with inflammation. You know that streptococci, rheumatogenic streptococci come in the throat with a beta hemolyticus, Lansfield group A, special streptococci come in the throat and they trigger the immune system. An immune system make antibody which cross react with patients on connective tissue. And rheumatic fever, what really happens? Patient develop primarily sore throat by which type of organism? Streptococcus, not staphylo, streptococcus. These are so beta hemolyticus, Lansfield group A, streptococcal infection in the throat may trigger the immune system, and immune system will make autoantibodies directed against heart or joint skin, subcutaneous tissue and central nervous system. So patient may develop, when reaction is against the heart, patient may develop uh, carditis, pericarditis, myocarditis or endocarditis, valvular damage, vegetations, patient may develop polyarthritis, patient may develop subcutaneous nodules, patient may develop erythema, marginatum or even damage to the basal ganglia may produce chorea. Right? So you know that there are special inflammatory lesions in the heart like Ishoff bodies. So that is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction in which antibodies are directed against the cardiac tissue and making inflammatory lesions over there, right? And that will fall into category B. Now we come to third category, right? That antibody mediated cellular dysfunction. In this case, there will be no cell depletion, no cell destruction and no inflammation. The very classical examples you must be knowing already. For example, in Graves disease, 
in grains this is what really happens that if you bring one follicle follicle outside you know follicles are special structures present in thyroid which are responsible to produce produce t3 t4 now look on the follicular surface there are receptors and these receptors are receptors for tsh these are the receptors for tsh this is tsh receptors normally thyroid stimulating hormone should bind there and stimulate these cells but sometimes immune system make auto auto antibodies and these antibodies react with the tsh receptors now this is very interesting antibodies bind with the tsh receptor and stimulate the tsh receptor don't destroy no inflammation no cell destruction no cell depletion here auto antibodies bind with the tsh receptor and super stimulate tsh receptor right so under such stimulation all these cell will produce massive amount of t3 and t4 and patient will develop hyperthyroidism this is the pathology in graves disease so graves disease is a classical example of type 2 hypersensitivity reaction category c in which there is no cellular depletion there is no cellular destruction right no cellular phagocytosis no cellular depletion or destruction no inflammation simply tsh binding antibodies tsh receptor binding antibodies over stimulate the tsh receptors and that leads to uh, increase follicular cells function right another example of uh, similar example is that let's suppose this is your spinal cord here is alpha motor neuron which neurons is this this is alpha motor neuron and what is happening there that this alpha motor neuron this is a muscle here right this releases which which chemical substance alpha motor neuron releases acetylcholine it releases acetylcholine let's suppose this is acetylcholine normally what happen acetylcholine come and bind with cholinergic receptors and when acetylcholine bind with the cholinergic receptors these receptors are open and cations will move in and stimulate the muscle neuromuscular junction so this is neuromuscular transmission that acetylcholine from the nerve ending crosses the synaptic cleft bind with the cholinergic nicotinic receptor open the channel this receptor is the ion channel which is regulated by acetylcholine and when this channel will open cations will go in especially sodium and flux will occur and that will produce local potential which may go to the action potential right now and muscle will contract now listen sometimes what happen this is the receptor and these are the points where acetylcholine bind now what really happens sometimes unfortunately immune system make antibodies immune system make auto antibodies these auto antibodies bind and cover this area when these auto antibodies will bind here listen now carefully they will not destroy they will not lead to phagocytosis they will not lead to inflammation they will simply sit and bind there that's it bind and sit there now do you think acetylcholine can bind there no and now acetylcholine cannot bind there so can acetylcholine cannot bind there can channel open no can cations go in so can uh, neuromuscular transmission be effective can muscle be stimulated so for it become very difficult to move the muscles and patient develop extreme fatigability this condition is called myasthenia gravis this condition is called myasthenia gravis and myasthenia gravis is another classical example of type 2 hypersensitivity reaction you know in this case again antigen is intrinsic and fixed antibodies react with that graves disease also antigen is intrinsic and fixed and antibodies react here antibodies are stimulating here antibodies are blockers but both are type 2 hypersensitivity reaction in which there is no destruction or depletion or inflammation simply cell dysfunction simply cell 
or tissue dysfunction. Is that right? Another example of this is insulin resistant diabetes mellitus. Another example of this is insulin resistant diabetes mellitus. In this case, autoantibodies will bind with what? Autoantibodies will bind with the insulin producing cells. Oh, sorry, insulin receptors. Autoantibodies will bind with the insulin receptors. If autoantibodies bind with the insulin receptors, can insulin work on the receptors? No. And that will produce insulin resistant diabetes mellitus. You will give the insulin to the patient, but there will, will not be a good response. Is that right? After that, we come to some test. In the, the tests which are done to you know, for type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, to detect the type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, the classical test which is done is Coombs test. And this test I will explain uh, in antigen antibody laboratory reactions. Example of type 2 hypersensitivity reaction is in which you know these are epidermal cells and they are held by special desmosome proteins in place. These are special proteins which are called desmosome, desmosomes, desmosomal proteins. Now what really happens, sometimes the antibodies are made against these proteins and these proteins act as a sticking proteins and hold the different layer of skin together. If antibodies bind with the desmosomal proteins, skin layers cannot be held together properly and multiple vesicles or blisters are formed on the skin. Multiple vesicles or blisters are formed on the skin and this condition is called pemphigus vulgaris. Pemphigus vulgaris. Pemphigus vulgaris. What really happens in the condition called uh, pemphigus vulgaris is that autoantibodies are directed against the desmosomal proteins which hold the layers of the skin together. When desmosomes are blocked or neutralized by the antibody presence and desmosomes don't work well, layers of the skin cannot stitch, cannot be stitched together well. These are you can say biological desmosomes are biological stitchers. Right? So these stitches don't work well and skin will develop multiple blisters. Is that clear? 